Ayatul Kursi is made up of nine sentences. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. Number one. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Number two. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Number three. What's number four? Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idhnihi. That's number four. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Number five. Then. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ Number six. Then, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Number seven. وَلَا يَأُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا Number eight. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Number nine. Nine sentences. The first sentence is Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. It's a beautiful sentence which ends with two of Allah's names. What are those two names? Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum The living and the source of all establishment Everything stands and exists and is maintained because of Allah What's incredible is that the last sentence Sentence number one Has something in common with sentence number nine Which is وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ How many names of Allah in the, in the last sentence? Two names of Allah in the first sentence Two names of Allah in the last sentence Okay before I go to the second sentence, let me tell you something about security. Security guards have a very hard job. But if you get a secure, you know, if you're in security, you have to stand, sit in your booth, you have to stare at the CCTV for hours and hours. And does it move? It's the same picture. And you have to look at it for 12 hours, 8 hours. What tends to happen when you're guarding something? You tend to get sleepy, you tend to get tired. Allah Azza wa Jal says about Himself, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Drowsiness. Drowsiness happens when you're tired. And of course, what happens after that? What's the next step? Noom. This is the second sentence. The second sentence is these are things that creation has. Creation gets tired and it starts getting drowsy and eventually it falls to sleep. What was the second last sentence? وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْضُهُمَا Guarding the skies and the earth does not exhaust Allah. When someone's exhausted, what do they get? Sina and Noom. The second sentence is actually connected to the second last sentence. لَا تَأْخُذُهُ سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْضُهُمَا He says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He owns Whatever is in the sky and the earth. Now before I tell you further, you need to understand the difference between two words, two names of Allah. Malik and Malik. Malik is an owner. Malik is an owner. Malik, what is Malik? King. king. Is there a difference between a king and an owner? Yes. Ownership is about property. But kingdom is not about, you know, you're not a, the king over a tree. Or the king over a piece of land. You're the king over the people who live in that land. Kingdom is about controlling people. Ownership is about controlling objects. It's a difference. Now Allah says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He owns whatever is in the skies and the earth. What is the ayah about? Ownership. What's the third last sentence? وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ his throne extends to the skies and the earth. When Allah talks about His throne, He's talking about His kingdom. One dimension of prop control is ownership. The other dimension is kingdom. Both completing the picture. Allah is Malik and He is Malik. The Malik part of Allah's attribute, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Third sentence. The king, kingdom of Allah وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Okay. What's the fourth sentence? مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Let's understand this ayah first. Who will come and make shafa'a with Allah except unless he gives permission? In other words, what is shafa'a? Shafa'a means you got connections. Shafa'a means that you were about to lose your job, but your uncle is the manager and he came and said, no, 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 no. He's with me. That's shafa'ah. 
On judgment day, we are in trouble possibly, and then somebody comes and says, no, 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 they're, they're, they're with me. They're with me. Go easy on them, please. We beg Allah Azza wa to qualify us for the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this ayah is about nobody having any authority unless Allah gives it to them. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ They know nothing, they can control, they, have in, they encircle nothing of his knowledge. إِلَّا except بِمَا شَاءٍ The fourth sentence and the sixth sentence are both about a statement about Allah and the only exception. The statement was, nobody has authority to make a case except whoever Allah gives permission. They have no knowledge except, except whoever He wants to give knowledge to. Otherwise they know nothing. The two, fourth and the sixth sentence are correlated. The first and the ninth, the second and the eighth, the third and the seventh, the fourth and the sixth, what's left? Middle sentence? He says, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Oh my God, he says he knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. As though, and he knew what is coming ahead in the ayah and what was behind in the ayah. He put the, in the, in the middle of it is, I know what's ahead and I know what's behind. Who speaks like that? Who speaks like that? SubhanAllah.